Indian Scout is a legendary name from Indians past. Also an important model since Indians rebirth under Polaris ownership. 83% of Scout owners are new to the Indian brand. So it's the entryway into Indian. And for the 2025 model year, the Scout has been extensively redesigned. The engine is almost all new. It's like a bigger bore version of the old one, but a whole bunch of internal changes that have happened and very few parts are interchangeable. 105 horsepower now, and on the 101 Scout here, it's 111 horsepower. So we've got a, a lot uh, beefier motor. There's, uh, the power band is beautiful. It's uh, got power everywhere. So from low down and then it has a nice little burst up top too. Also new is the frame. The Scout used to have an aluminum frame. Aluminum sounds good, but the old aluminum frame had a, this awkward uh, section uh, behind the front wheel. They went to a tubular steel frame now and you can probably see here the radiator is kind of hidden in between the down tubes and so by changing from that bulky aluminum frame to this one the bike looks more svelte there's a, a less visual weight they say and it's true the new frame uh, despite it being steel the bike weighs about the same as the old one does the motor though they lost somewhere around 10 pounds and 5.8 pounds came off the crank itself so there's a, a lot of new stuff here for the 2025 model year. For 2025, the Scout line is five models. The Bobber returns, and the Bobber has been the best-selling model for Indian, and that's a uh, kind of a stripped-down model, $13,000 starting price, and then you can get electronics and uh, digital gauges added on top of that. But that's expected to be the best-selling model again in this new generation. And then there's the Scout Classic, which is kind of like the Bobber, but uh, more chrome finishes, a longer rear fender, looks more traditional. It'll appeal to a certain kind of buyer, but maybe not the younger ones. The Bobber is the one for that. The Bobber also, it has, uh, of all the five models, it has the shortest shocks. There's two inches of rear suspension travel. And on normal roads, it's fine. And then when you get some uh, sharp edge bumps, it gets a pretty sharp hit to your rear end. And that's why I prefer the other models, which all have three inches of rear suspension travel. Uh, also common among all models, except for this 101, is a single disc front brake. And that does a decent job. All bikes have ABS, anti-lock brakes. The front brake is decent. It's got braided steel lines, so it's got a firm feel, but it's not super powerful like this one, which I'll get to in a minute. Uh, after the Scout, there is the Super Scout, which is kind of a light touring version of the Scout. So it's got a little windshield, saddlebags, and it would make a great choice if you want to uh, pack up and spend a, a weekend away out of town. Moving up the ladder, we've got the Sport Scout, which kind of mimics the Sport Chief that debuted last year or the year before. And so that's got a very similar windscreen to the 101. And it's got the handlebar risers, which I prefer the handlebars up higher. The bobbers are quite low, kind of a gunfighter's kind of active stance, but you're lean forward a fair bit. So I prefer the higher bars. And on the Sport Scout, it comes with the six inch handlebar risers, which puts my hands in a better place where I liked it. And then we've got the top of the line Scout. This is the 101 Scout, resurrecting a famous name from Indians past. The 101 Scout back in the day was revered for being a light, good handling, maybe the best handling bike of its day. And now that name gets resurrected for the 2025 model year here on the 101 Scout. And it comes with all the good stuff. The main distinction with the 101 Scout is the front end. This uh, fork and front brake setup is essentially what was used on the FTR 1200. So it's got a, an inverted design instead of the conventional uh, right side up forks of all the other Scout models. And so it's a little beefier and then fitted to it are a set of dual disc brakes with Brembo calipers. And the improvement in braking power on this setup is so much superior to the regular ones. Most people aren't really charging down canyons and uh, biting deeply into brakes, so that's fine for them. But if you're the sporty rider, you definitely want the 101 Scout because these brakes are terrific and the suspension, uh, it's fully adjustable. So the fork, compression, rebound and preload and the rear shocks too. Nice compression adjusters right here and rebounds just underneath. 
and uh, it was nice to dial it in a little bit. I added some rebound, took uh, the rebound all the way up, and uh, I found a lot better control with this suspension on the 101. The 101 also comes fully equipped. Uh, other models, uh, you get uh, added uh, the technology package and technology plus. The 101 comes with all that stuff standard. So the Scout Bobber starts at $13,000, and then this one, uh, we're just about touching $17,000, $16,999, which is coincidentally the same price as the current Harley-Davidson Sportster S. So identically priced motorcycles, a different kind of motorcycle though. The Sportster S, it's got the Revolution Max motor. It's a great, powerful motor, smooth. But I kind of prefer the character of this one. This has more of a, an earthy kind of vibration and coarseness to it that uh, you don't get on the RevMax. And uh, this one with 111 horsepower, it's uh, got nearly as much as the Harley Davidson. And it just feels more like a cruiser motor rather than a normal motorcycle motor. So for me, uh, I would definitely pay the extra dollars for the 101 because it comes with all the good stuff that I like. And if you're a sporty rider, that should be your choice too. So that's just a little short recap of my ride, which was two days of riding on all five models. If you like this video, subscribe to the Rider Magazine YouTube channel so you can keep abreast of all the new bikes that are coming out.